So in this video, I've done something really exciting and it's something that I've wanted to do for a very long time. How you can make your money go further when you're buying chicken. If you're someone who's buying chicken breasts, then you can take that same amount of money and buy a whole chicken, get your two chicken breasts and also get loads of extra, extra food for free that you wouldn't have normally had. We're gonna go through the whole process, buying the chicken, parting it out into different portions, how you can use all those portions, a couple of recipes in here, and hopefully it's gonna leave you in a position to be able to get more food for your money when you're in the supermarket. Doing that little bit more in the process of making your own food as well. I'm quite often talking about the virtues of doing a little bit more yourself and I also talk about ways to save money when you're cooking and using a cut of meat and making your meat go further. So we're kind of joining all those things together today and I'm going to show you something really simple about butchering a chicken and I'm going to, I'm going to literally go to the farmer's market with you guys, we're gonna buy a whole chicken and we're just gonna look at the difference between a whole chicken, the cost of that versus buying chicken breasts because so many people, so many families that I know only buy chicken breasts from the supermarket or the shop, however they're buying it. And you can get a whole chicken for almost the same money. So why wouldn't you do that? Well, for a lot of people, it's a bit of fear about dealing with a whole bird. So hopefully we're going to demystify that a little bit today. And we're also gonna show you how you can get the most out of that whole bird and make loads and loads of meals out of that one purchase, rather than just getting two chicken breasts, making your chicken salad or whatever, and then moving on. We're gonna break down a chicken, really, really simple, much simpler than you probably think. We're gonna break it down into breasts, legs, wings, thighs, we're gonna separate all of that out, we're gonna have the carcass, we're gonna show you how to make stock, all of those things. Really, really simple and a really, really valuable thing to be doing if you're not already. It's definitely a skill you need to know. So I can get one breast for about a fiver. For a whole bird. Right, so I've got my chicken here, and a couple of things to say quickly before we start. Firstly, I'm not using one of my own chickens because we don't have any left. We've eaten all of our chickens that we've butchered, so I need to raise some more at some point, which we will shortly. But for now, we are buying shop chickens, so we buy them if we can from somewhere where we know where they're grown. These are grown locally, free ranging and everything else. So this is the chicken we're using. We're gonna break this down now and we're gonna talk about all the different ways that we can use it. Critically, I'm gonna show you all the ways that you can use every part of this chicken, including the skin and the carcass to create amazing, amazing flavorful food. And all I'm gonna be using are these two knives. Nice sharp knives are quite important. Now the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna to want to open up these thighs. So you can pull it apart, you can see the skin gets stretched here. And we just wanna cut that skin where it's stretching so that we can open the thighs right out. And it's just gonna make the whole chicken butchering process that little bit easier. Just like that. And the next thing we're gonna do is remove these wings. So, this joint is actually given way here, so I will just quickly separate that now. So you'll see we've got the, the wing tip there and the top of the wing is still attached. So we're just gonna score along that crease and open it up and then just really open it up with your hands until it pops and you'll feel, it's like a ball and socket joint, and you'll just feel it give away. And then we're just gonna remove that from the rest of the chicken and you shouldn't need to cut through any bone. So just feel where the bone is detached and that's where you're gonna to wanna to cut through. And that's the top of our chicken wing. It'd be better to show you on this one because it's all still attached. So we've got sort of three sections to the wing. If you bend it, you'll see you've got one, two, and then three, and we wanna take all three of them off. So again, we're just gonna manipulate that until it cracks out of the joint, like that. And then again, just Come along that crease. And we again, we're not trying to cut through any bones, just where the bone is already 
detached from the rest of the bird. Just like that. Right, now we're gonna come back and take these thighs off. Again, you'll see I'm just cutting through. There's no, I'm never cutting through a bone. And we're gonna cut the skin here. So that we're only taking the skin that's attached to the leg, to the thigh. And then this additional bit of skin, we'll just cut off and put to one side. We're not gonna waste that, that's for sure. So again, if I show you a bit better here, you'll see you've got this crease where the leg bends, but then you've also got this, this extra little bit, which I think is called the oyster. So we're gonna to wanna to go around that with our knife and bring that with us with our thigh. Turn the bird back over. We'll see we've got our two chicken breasts and the rest of the carcass. Now, I'm just gonna remove some of the excess skin and some of this fat. And at this point, you can basically decide whether you want your breasts to be skin on or skin off. Now, that's gonna depend on how you're cooking them. For now, I'm going to butcher out the rest of this bird with the skin on. And you start, we're just trying to, in fact, let's remove a little bit of this skin down here as well, this extra skin by the neck. Now, the breasts, you'll feel there's a little bone, the breastbone that runs down the middle. It should be quite easy to find. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna run our knife along it, get through that skin first. I'm sort of pulling and separating the breasts as I go to keep everything tight. And then once we get along that bone, we then just want to carry on cutting right up against it. Just remove the breast from it. We're nearly done. That's your chicken breast with your skin on. And now we'll do the other side. And that's our second breast. So after just a couple of minutes, we've got our chicken carcass, two breasts, two legs, wings and some other bits including the skin the amount of meat here compared to the same price if i'd spent it on just breasts is ridiculous but not only the amount of meat the amount of flavor and options that we're going to get so the next thing we're going to do is start working out how we can use every piece of this bird now we're going to start with this carcass and this is just packed full of flavor just waiting for us to unleash it so i'm going to put that on a baking tray and i'm just going to rip it open and crack it open into two or three bits so that we've got more surface area. That's all we're after, and that's good enough. Just like that. Now in there, we've obviously got bones. We've also got some skin left on there, some fat, and that's all gonna break down. We're gonna put that in the oven. But before we do, I'm gonna put that to one side just for a second, because before we do, we're just gonna do one more bit of prep with the chicken legs. So we can now break these down even further into thighs and drumsticks. Just follow the, the joint between where the two muscles join. You're all familiar with the, the shape of a chicken drumstick, so that's what we're looking to create here. And then once we've done that, we're gonna expose that joint in the bone, and that's what we're gonna cut through. Done, so there's our chicken drumstick and our chicken thigh. We'll do that again with this guy. So again, chicken drumstick, chicken thigh. Now the reason we did this quickly before we started to do anything else with that carcass is because now we've got the option if we want to, you don't have to, but if you want to, we can actually debone this thigh piece, which is fairly easy. There's just one bone going through it and we just trace the side of the bone with our knife, take it off the meat. And with the bone, I'm also just removing any cartilage and hard bits. My goal here, is to turn this, this chicken thigh, which in my opinion has just got amazing flavor and texture, it's one of the best bits of the chicken, is turning it into something that perhaps fussier eaters would be happier to try and expose themselves to. So my kids who really like chicken breast, they don't, you know, not all of them, but a couple of them are, are big fans of chicken breast. They're not keen on eating anything off the bone. I can give them this as a way of getting them into the idea of the better flavor and texture of other parts of the chicken. So that's my chicken thigh. We'll come back to that in a second. We'll get this bone off this one. Boom, done. And one of the beauties of doing this, if you're 
unfamiliar with butchering, if you've not really butchered anything before, one of the beauties of doing this, doing the whole thing, is nothing's going to waste. So if you do make a bit of a mistake and you end up taking a bit more meat off than you would have liked with some of your bones, it doesn't matter because none of it's gonna to go to waste. So this here, I'm now gonna put this in the oven at about 180 degrees Celsius for about 45 minutes to brown it off. And that's gonna release so many of those flavors as the outside of this caramelizes as it turns brown. Right, so that's the first step to making our chicken stock. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually salt brine these thighs. Now dry brining is just an amazing way of treating meat and it's going to enhance not just the flavor, but the texture. So we're gonna pop these on a plate here. These are the thighs. We're gonna salt brine them, both sides. And then pop them in the fridge where they're gonna stay for about a day. We'll leave them until tomorrow now. So that leaves us with two breasts, two drumsticks, some wings, and also this skin and fat. So this is the bit we're gonna deal with next. Before we do, I'm just gonna pop the rest in the fridge as well to keep it cool. It's quite a hot day. And we'll come back to that in a second. So next up, frying pan on a fairly high heat. And I'm not putting any oil in here. What I am gonna do is slice up this fat and this skin into little pieces. In fact, do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get those chicken breasts out and I'm gonna take the skin off those as well. Because I want that skin here and I don't really want it on the breasts for what I'm doing. So if I was gonna fry these chicken breasts, I would probably leave the skin on it. But for now, I've got a better use of that skin. So if you want to de-skin de it, just hold the skin up high, bring a nice sharp knife along it, pointing away from the breast all the time. So now I'm gonna get that Skin in the pan. So you'll notice on these breasts, you'll have this other piece hanging on the back, which is basically the tenderloin. You can separate that out if you like and use it the same. I would use them both the same way, the breast and the tenderloin. I would use them both the same way as you would chicken breast in any recipe. So you could dice this and fry it and then add it to a curry, something like that. You could sous vide it, you could poach it. It will have a tendency to dry out, so that's why you'd leave the skin on if you were gonna fry it. But all I'm going to do with it, actually, is freeze it. I'm gonna put these in the freezer as chicken breasts and that will be a meal for sometime down the road. So you haven't seen, but I've probably washed my hands 12 times since I started making this video because Raw chicken is definitely not something you want to mess around with. If I was to use my fingers to touch this chicken and then go and use that doorknob, for example, it really runs a risk of transferring the bacteria onto the next person's hand who opens that door and onto their dinner and everything else. So um, I'm not showing you every time, but I'm washing my hands every time I step away from the chicken to get a utensil out the drawer, to open a drawer, I'm washing my hands first. Ready for the freezer. Over here, we're browning off nicely. And you'll remember I didn't put any fat in that pan. Look at that crispy chicken skin. So we're going to put that to one side now. And then we're also gonna save that chicken fat. Or most of it, whatever I don't spill. So I've left a little bit of fat in the pan there because the next thing we're going to do, we're gonna brown those thighs and the wings. And the reason we're browning these off is because we're gonna braise them. Braising is a cooking technique that mystifies a lot of people, but it couldn't be simpler. Braising is, is simply this. Brown off some meat and then cook it slowly in some liquid. Simple. And the thighs and the wings really lend themselves well to braising. Now, of course, you can also just cook them and eat them just like you would at a barbecue, but for our purposes here, we're gonna make them into a whole meal. So we're gonna put them in a sauce and basically sort of break up the meat. We're gonna let it cook slowly in a sauce so that it falls off the bone. And then we can use it to make something like a chili flavored chicken that you'd have in tortillas, in tortillas or tacos, or you could use like, which I'm gonna do, our Moroccan spice blend that I've mentioned before. We're just gonna do like a Moroccan 
style chicken that we can serve with rice. So this chicken fat or smolts we're gonna put in the fridge and we're just gonna use that for frying other things in down the line. And these bits of chicken skin, we're gonna eat just like pork scratchings, but they are a really great addition. To be sprinkled onto the top of things like soups. That is delicious, crazy good. This would also work just served on the side of pretty much any chicken dish, just like you might serve pork crackling next to roast pork. So my thighs and wings are nicely brown. I'm going to add some onion, then remove the chicken. Add a little bit more of that chicken fat we saved earlier. Add my Moroccan spice blend. Tomato skins dried and some chili and some salt all in here. Finally a tin of tomatoes. And I'm just gonna let all those flavors infuse for five or 10 minutes. Got to add some honey. Right, I'm just gonna blend that sauce up now. And then we're gonna let that cook low and slow for a couple of hours until the meat just falls off the bone. In the meantime, I think our carcass should be ready. Perfect. So all of that now goes in the slow cooker. We'll save that fat that's been rendered with the rest. And we'll make sure that we get all of these scrapings. Because that's really good stuff. Packed full of flavor. We get all that into the slow cooker. And we'll just add enough water to cover everything. Pop the lid on and forget about that for 12 hours or so. So we'll come back to that tomorrow as well. I have to say I'm a huge fan of making stocks because they're just so valuable in cooking. There's bases for sauces, for just adding real flavor to things. When I put my chicken fat in here, I noticed something I might share with you. I've always got some stock in the fridge because like I say, it's just invaluable for so many things, so many things that I want to cook. But that's me about done here, apart from the washing up. So I'm gonna do the washing up. We'll come back, check on that in a couple of hours. So far, we've broken everything down. We've got a meal there being prepared. We've got stock there being prepared. We've got another meal in the fridge being prepared. And in the freezer, we've got our two chicken breasts. I'm not even going to be touching those chicken breasts. That's what you would buy in the shop. If you went to buy two chicken breasts, that's what you've bought. You've got that, it's in the freezer, just like me. Or if you've bought a whole chicken, You've still got that in the freezer, just like me, but you've also got an amazing meal going on here, another one in the fridge, that chicken stock, the chicken fat in the fridge, and that chicken skin, that crispy chicken skin. So there's so much more from a whole bird. All right, this has been simmering for a couple of hours now, so let's have a look. It should, yeah, look, it's just falling off the bone. So I'm just gonna shred that up now, serve that. That's what we're gonna have now for our dinner. We're gonna have that with rice and some salad. This is not all, just some of the drumsticks and chicken wings with the rice and salad. And uh, there's enough out of that. We've made three meals out of that. So it's me, my wife, one of the kids, and uh, more still to come. Right, so it's the following day, it's lunchtime. So what we're gonna do is we're going to decant our stock, which has just been in the slow cooker overnight. It's probably had 16 hours, something like that, which is perfect. Then we're going to take out the dry brine thighs and we're gonna cook them and that's gonna be lunch. Smells amazing. So that's our chicken stock, and this will get used in lots of different ways. It's great for making risottos, it's essential for making a chicken soup. And speaking of chicken soup, before we actually compost the carcass, we will pick off any little tiny bits of meat that are on it and we'll save them as well and they will go into a chicken soup. Another way that you're gonna use every last piece. And once we've done that, we can add some more water to that and let that sit in the slow cooker for two or three days and create even more stock from the same bones. This bird just keeps giving and giving and giving. Now these, as you can see, we've left the skin on. So we're going to pan fry these and that dry brining that we've done overnight with the salt on there, that's going to give us really, really amazing crispy skin. I'm gonna put that in there, skin side down. 
this and we're just having really, really simple. We've got some beans and carrots in there from the garden. Just going to toss a little bit of soy sauce in there and then we're going to serve that with this chicken and some potatoes that I've got in the air fryer. There you go, this is the last bit of cooking on this video, but don't forget we've still got those two chicken breasts in the freezer. And that got good reviews from the wife, so we're all happy here. So there you go, that is it. That's how you can take one bird and for the cost of two chicken breasts, get all of that food out of it. We've got the two chicken breasts in the freezer, we've just had a meal, I had a meal last night, we've got the stock left over, we've got the fat in the fridge, we had that chicken skin, which again, you could have used on, a, on another meal. It's just the gift that keeps giving. And that was a really small bird, I have to say, a really small bird. So you can obviously extend this out to bigger birds or more birds. If you're normally buying four breasts at a time, just get two chickens, do the work and get all that extra, extra food. It's just, why wouldn't you do it? Why wouldn't you do it? Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching everyone. If you found it in any way useful, please make sure that you press that like button. Leave me a comment down below if you're not already subscribed to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you on the next one. Cheers.